Okay, this is going to be a special video because I don't normally get a chance to bust these things out. All right, are you ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, Straw Hat. Dance at the end of my parasite threads. <laughs> Do Flamingo, I mean, look, the dude had a lot of stuff going for him. His fashion sense, just his glasses. I mean, not a lot of villains can pull off a feather boa, but my god, Doflamingo was able to do it. Doflamingo had an evil laugh. I mean, he did. He laughed quite a bit. His, his laugh was very subdued at times, though. He would just be like, <laughs> These children think they can fight against me and win. <laughs> it's so laughable. But I'm telling you what, Doflamingo needed a much more bombastic kind of evil laugh, right? Like, Doflamingo, I mean, he was kind of on top of the world for a while. He kind of had everything locked down in Dressrosa, like, quite literally had things locked down in a birdcage. I mean, I'm just saying, Oda, you could have had a really cool scene in this story where after Doflamingo activated the birdcage, trapped everybody on the island, and he seemingly came back from the dead after Kiros cut his damn head off, you know, he had, like, the Black Knight, so, you know, Doflamingo comes back, traps everybody, Pika reconstructed the entire island in the process. You could have had a moment where Doflamingo just flew into the air for no reason and was like, ha, 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 I control all of your lives! You know, like, that, that I think that could have worked. I think that could have worked. Anyway, um, because recently we made a lot of discussions about Sanji possibly turning evil, I decided let's make a video talking about how exactly evil all these characters from One Piece are. We're going to be going through some villains. Now, um, I've made a few videos before about the villains of One Piece. I did a Horoween series where I talked about, like, the best villains of One Piece. But that was mostly talking about, like, you know, their place in the plot, how interesting they were, their abilities, that sort of stuff. What was their ambition? Nah, nah, nah. This time around, we are just talking about how absolutely evil they are. All right? Like, that's, that's how it goes. And for that reason... We needed a sort of scale to work with here, and I went to Twitter a few days ago, and I asked you, uh, the good people, like, hey, uh, out of all of the anime that you have seen in your life, and manga as well, who are the most evil characters? I'm talking people with very, very little to no redemption. I just wanted to see the most extreme, you know, level of this meter, okay? And so we got a lot of, uh... <laughs> We got a lot of recommendations here. Um, we have the standards, I think, the ones that I was expecting. So, like, Dio from JoJo's, uh, Frieza from Dragon Ball popped up quite a bit. And I mean, like, yeah, Frieza... He's one of the original, like, villains. Like, he's one of the first anime villains a lot of people actually were exposed to, like myself. Um, but, you know, don't fix what's not broken. Frieza, genocidal maniac, blows up entire planets with a cackling smile on his face, and he owns every second of that, right? That's Frieza's character, all right? So Frieza, Dio, Shao Tucker from Full Metal Alchemist. I mean, there's evil, and then there's just... Jeez, dude, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, I even feel like, I don't know if they would, but I feel like if, if all these villains from anime got together, like Dio's there, Frieza's there, freaking, uh, who else did I put on this list? Um, oh, yeah, so a lot of people were actually recommending this guy, uh, Johan Leibert from Monster. Um, it's a series by Naoki Urasawa, and I've never heard of this series. I've never read it or watched it. Um, but not only did a lot of people recommend this dude, he also shows up on, like, when I was looking at lists online of, like, top, you know, anime villains, he would usually appear at or the near the number one spot, okay? So that actually got me a little curious. I need to check out that story, I guess. But I don't know. All the villains come together in anime, and it's just, like, Frieza talks about all the messed up stuff he does. Doflamingo's there. Dio talks about all the stuff he did to the Joe Stars and everything like that. That time he fed a baby to his vampiric mother. Um, yeah. And then and Shao Tucker explains what he did, and I feel like a lot of people would be like, geez, okay. You need to go over there, and they're like, Shao Tucker would be at the party, but he'd be in the corner of the party. Nobody would want to talk to him, and he's just standing there in the corner, sipping punch, and just like a big banner's ahead of him, just like, you know, you know, worst villains in anime history, and he's the one that's no one wants to talk to, okay? Well, anyway... We're going to go through the uh, uh, villains in One Piece. We're not going to go through every single one. I just kind of have a list of the ones that 
I think should even be here. You know, like there's some characters that technically you could consider villains and antagonists that Luffy has faced off against, but I don't, I really wouldn't consider them evil in a sense. You know, like Magellan, okay? Magellan, the warden of Impel Down, he fought Luffy and he actually kind of won, but I wouldn't consider Magellan evil. He was the warden of a prison and Luffy broke into the prison and tried to break everybody out of the prison. Magellan was just kind of doing his job, right? Like, he's a warden of a prison. He's got to make sure the prison stays secure. And he did that. Well, he tried to do that anyway, right? So I wouldn't consider Magellan evil, despite the fact he does kind of look like the devil. Um, that just tells you the weird juxtapositioning we have here in the story. Uh, we're going to go down this list. And I guess I'm just going to try to pick, like, a character that's the most similar to the One Piece character. And then do that on a scale of 1 to 10. So let's, let's just start with Doflamingo because we kind of started off with that and so okay you know who is the most similar to Doflamingo and then on a scale of 1 to 10 where does he rank with that character okay so let's go through Doflamingo here well Doflamingo the reason he's so messed up or one of the reasons he's so messed up is he was born a celestial dragon and they're you know often kind of just messed up in general um but you know he was raised in that environment of like hey you're just better than everybody else and they should all bow down before you his parents didn't really apply to that philosophy and his little brother didn't apply to that philosophy but doflamingo took to it like a duck to water and air and ground whatever ducks are super beings anyway point is doflamingo was like yes bow down before me ants and so even after you know his father homing took him away and they're living in like a normal kind of you know town he was still acting like that um it also didn't help that once they found out that, you know, they were celestial dragons, they attacked them and, you know, like raised them up, tied them to a post, set them on fire. This is also the point where Doflamingo's eyes were severely damaged, okay? So he's got, he's got a pretty messed up childhood, I would say, Doflamingo, okay? Uh, that's not an excuse for the stuff that he does, but I would say in that respect... I, I would say he's very similar to Dio in that in that aspect. Dio also had a pretty messed up childhood, you know, kind of beaten constantly by his alcoholic father. Not a great place to grow up. Um, so on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most Dio you could possibly be, you know? It's just like, it's me, Dio, okay? Uh, where would Doflamingo be placed, okay, in that scale of evil? And I... I would probably say, yeah, 10 out of 10 Dios, <laughs> you know, I think Doflamingo and Dio would actually get along quite well. Um, Dio, I, I understand we learn another objective, another goal that he had uh, during Stone Ocean, which is coming out, I think, early December. I think we do have a date for that now. I think it's like December. I, I know it's early December. I don't want to say a date, but I think it was given for Netflix for the first 12 episodes of Stone Ocean. But I have not read Stone Ocean, nor have I, you know, I don't know anything about it, honestly, uh, other than just like the principal cast. But I know that Dio, we find out some more stuff about him there. But when it comes to just like part three, Stardust Crusaders, Dio's main principal goal was just to kind of become like the strongest person ever like it was really basic it was basically just to annihilate the joe stars control jonathan's body and become like the supreme being okay and you know joe flamingo i mean not exactly the same thing but you know wanted to rule all of dress rosa wanted to kind of command everything um certainly very powerful character i i would say it, it syncs up very well to that so that's basically how it's going to be structured so let's just let's start from the beginning of the story here uh, we're going to skip over alvito we're just going to go to morgan all right morgan was a pretty big dick now here's the thing about him he was evil, but the thing is, he was hypnotized by Kuro to make himself think he was, like, the greatest Marine ever. So that kind of puts it in context when we see him at Shelltown, where he's, like, just an asshole to all of his subordinates, and he's, like, mistreating his own men, and he's forcing them to build giant statues of himself. Like, literally, he was hypnotized by Kuro to be like, oh, yes, you captured Captain Kuro of the Black Cat Pirates. You, Morgan, are the greatest marine that ever lived and you know it, the hypnotism just you know that affected his personality from that moment onward i would assume i don't think he was such a great guy from the beginning but i guess we'll never really know and that hypnotism and that made him so arrogant to think that about himself right and so not a lot of redeemable qualities about Morgan. On top of that, he was also kind of a shitty dad uh, to Helmeppo, right? Um, and so, let's see here. We got a crappy dad. <laughs> crappy dad. 
uh, you know, very, you know, kind of more dedicated to his own craft of just being a, you know, a Marine. Like, I'm a Marine captain. I'm awesome. I got an axe for a hand, you know. Just because of the dad, I think any character on this list that's going to be having parent or dad issues, we got to compare to Shao Tucker. But the problem is Shao Tucker is so jacked up of a character. I'm going to put Morgan as a 1 out of 10 Shao Tuckers in terms of evil. Because, like, he kind of just let him do his own thing, honestly. Like, he didn't really care about him, but he's just like, yeah, whatever, you have your little room, do whatever you do, I don't really care, take your wolf out into town and terrorize the local citizens, I, I don't give a shit, really. At least Morgan wasn't, you know, transmuting Helmeppo into a weird freak chimera creature, right? I mean, like, okay. So maybe like one or two out of ten. Shout Tucker. There we go. That's Morgan. Buggy! Okay, Buggy. I'm putting Buggy on here just because we're talking about One Piece villains. We gotta talk about Buggy at some point. Alright. So Buggy, I mean, like, he just feels like he's not good enough. Um, he was on the Pirate King Goldie Rogers ship, surrounded by some of the biggest badasses that ever sailed the Grand Line. You got Roger, you got Rayleigh, you got Scopper Gabon, you got Wang Sh Oh wait, no, he wasn't part of Rock. He was part of Rox's crew, not Roger's crew. Fair. But you also got Crocus, and you got Odin, the most amazing samurai that ever did live, okay? Plus, his best friend was Shanks who would later grow up to become one of the most powerful pirates in the world. Meanwhile, Buggy is kind of just, you know, in the east, and he has his own crew. But you have to feel like he feels pretty upset by that, so maybe most of the stuff he does is just because, like, you know, I'm a pirate because I was raised by pirates, and my best friend was a pirate, but he's not my best friend anymore. But I'm just never going to be as good <laughs> as the other pirates, you know? So where, where do you put him down there? I, I'm not sure, really. I would say Dio with Buggy as well, like as some comparison there, but he would also rank really low there. Um, you know, just because Dio, I think, felt like just like everybody's kind of looking down on him. And so there's that kind of idea, and that's like one of the reasons that drove him to become the person that he became. Uh, but Buggy would rank pretty low there. I mean, Buggy, he's definitely killed people. Uh, you know, he's, he's Buggy, he's a pirate, he's definitely killed people. The idea is he would just kind of take over towns and then launch those buggy balls just into the surrounding buildings. Now, at Orangetown, nobody was really there. Like, the town kind of evacuated. Um, but I feel like Buggy has done that with other towns before, where they just go into the East Blue, find a really peaceful village, find the place, set up shops, set up the big top, and just, you know, get drunk and launch explosives into the town. And, you know, pr probably people have died from that. So, not, not nearly as bad as Dio, but I would probably rank Buggy a good solid 2 out of 10 Dio's. Two out of ten Dio's for Buggy there. Uh, who's next? Kuro. All right. Kuro is the Machiavellian schemer. And with that being said, I kind of do have a character in mind right now for Kuro who I'm going to compare him to. But Kuro is this Machiavellian schemer. He's He doesn't really even like being a pirate. He just, I think, liked scheming, you know? Um, kind of taking uh, pleasure and just reveling in his own intellect. Like, I am so much more superior than all of these these pathetic peons that are surrounding me. I could outthink all of them. I could come up with plan after plan after plan to circumnavigate all of their plans. You know, I'm just on the next level before he was headbutted by a rubber kid and, you know, immediately knocked out of the story. Um, but you know what? I'm rewatching Death Note right now. So I think uh, we're going to go with Light Yagami here. Yeah, Light Yagami compared to Captain Kuro. Kind of in terms of like just the arrogance once again, but it's not an arrogance that's just blind. It's more of an arrogance that comes from intelligence. You know, just like Kuro and Light both kind of have this personality of just like, I am so much smarter, so that makes me so much better, so that makes me kind of indestructible kind of kind of personalities from Kuro and Light. So let's go with that. Um, I don't know. That, that brings up a question. What if Kuro got his hands on the Death Note? I wonder how he would handle it. Um, certainly, Kuro, I think, might just be a big fish in a small pond kind of situation. Uh, he is rather intelligent. He is a, a very interesting schemer. But I also think he suffers from not really knowing what he wants in life. Um, you know, so it's just like, I don't want to be a pirate. So he comes up with this elaborate plan to evade the pirate life and, like, hypnotize Morgan. But then when he, you know, becomes a butler on Kaya's Island and he sort of has, like, the quiet kind of simple life, that still doesn't make him happy. And he's still, like, kind of trying to scheme, all right, now I need to figure out a way to eliminate Kaya to get all of her money and then, and then what? He just buys a, a mansion and just lives in the mansion? He just seems like a guy that doesn't understand what he really wants, okay? 
Um, I'll, I'll give him a good 5 out of 10 light Yagamis for Captain Kuro. 5 out of 10 lights, you know, not as bad as Light Turner from the Netflix adaptation. That's 1 out of 10 lights for Light Turner. 5 out of 10 lights for, for Kuro. Um, who's next? We got Krieg! I'm Don Krieg, you fools! Oh god, Krieg is... Krieg is an idiot. I mean, he was an idiot. I mean, most of his battle strategies involve just, like, these really underhanded tactics. Like, he just did not care what he had to do in order to, um, get the one-up on an enemy. So he would fly a marine flag on his ship, or the white flag, and be like, you know, I surrender, or we're marines! Like, oh, okay! And then he would arrive at the town and just sack the whole place. Um, very dirty, kind of underhanded tactics there. Wow, Dio is just... <laughs> Dio is kind of like the baseline denominator for a lot of these characters. Um, because, yeah, I don't think he's, he would be compared to Frieza there. I also put Kid Buu down from Dragon Ball. Uh, as Kid Buu was literally just... He is the embodiment of pure evil and wrath. Like, that is Kid Buu. To the point where he doesn't really have a personality. He is just like the amalgam, the avatar of evil. That's, that's Kid Buu. I don't know if we're going to run into any character in One Piece that's like close to that sort of uh, character. Uh, but I put him on there as sort of just like if we did. If we did run into a character that's just pure evil, not because of their backstory, not because of any encounter they had with anybody, not because of of something else or some like like possession or some you know ability like that just literally because they're just evil for the sake of evil i put kid boo on here but i don't know we, we might encounter a character like that not sure um but yeah i don't know krieg let's let's go with dio again but he's gonna rank very low <laughs> you know because like dio was way smarter than krieg <laughs> You know, especially in Phantom Blood, you know, that was the name of the game with Dio's character. It was just, like, underhanded tactics, you know, poisoning uh, Jonathan's dad um, when they were kids. You know, the, the dirty boxing he did and everything like that. Um, setting his dog on fire. That was a pretty underhanded tactic, you know. Um, you know, kissing his girlfriend, you know. Like, that's just, yeah. That's, that's, that's a Dio thing, so I guess we'll go with that. But Krieg is only going to rank. What did I give Buggy? I think I gave Buggy 2 out of 10 Dio's. Yeah, we're going to give Krieg 1 out of 10 Dio's. Yeah, yeah, Buggy ranks higher than Krieg in that point. Krieg was just, yeah, he was just an asshole. Arlong, all right, Arlong. You know, at first glance in the story, Arlong did sort of seem as just like, and that's what I think Oda was going for. I'm going to introduce these fishmen, and they're sort of like monsters, you know, like they kind of look like monsters, and they're like torturing humans and everything like that. And then we're going to flip that on its head in a really big way as we go through the rest of the One Piece story where we learn about, no, not all fishmen are like that, but not even that. It's just that the humans were the ones that were oppressing them for centuries, which led to people like Arlong and Horty Jones, you know, you know, coming up and raised with that sort of ideology, right? So that's the way this was handled there. So he had a pretty, pretty messed up childhood there, I would say, with Arlong. Um, and he just basically took that. And he's like, all right, humans have tortured us and enslaved us for countless years, and they killed Fisher Tiger, so I'm just going to do the same thing to them. I'm going to set up shop in the East Blue, and I'm just going to, you know, enslave all the humans on the island, force them to pay me money, and just, you know, torture them for my own enjoyment. And that's the way that Arlong, you know, thought the world should be for him, right? He's a douche, but he's also much more of like a revenge story, I guess you could say, Does he went blind with revenge um, for Fisher Tiger's death. So if revenge is the name of the game for Arlong, we have a few options there. I mean, there's a lot of anime characters that are driven by revenge. Not all of them are villains, though. Uh, like Karapika from Hunter x Hunter, you know, immediately springs to mind. And I guess at certain points, you might consider Karapika kind of teetering on that, like, scale there. Um, but more so than Karapika, I would say Sasuke Uchiha from Naruto. Because Sasuke is a straight-up villain for a certain point in that ser in that series. A good chunk of it, actually. Not really until the very end that he kind of redeems himself, if you even consider he did redeem himself. I mean, that's up to you, really, honestly. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna say, Sasuke had a lot of ambitions on what he was gonna do with the world. And if it would have come to fruition, it would have been very messed up if, if, if his plans actually worked out the way that he wanted them to when he was, like, still, like, really kind of, you know, evil and stuff. Um, but none of it really happened, you know? Like, none of it really came to fruition. Meanwhile, Arlong, he did this for over a decade, and he ruled over Kokoyashi Village. So you know what? Controversial judgment call here. Arlong, 11 out of 10 Sasuke Uchiha's.
There we go. All right. So next up is uh, Wapple from the Drum Island arc. Um, okay, Wapple, once again, very typical kind of, I'm the king, I have all the power, so I rule everybody, and they can just shut up and deal with it, because I'm the king. Whoa! Pass me that giant piece of mutton. You know, that's, that's Wapple's character. So I guess we'll just, in that respect, somebody obsessed with power and just controlling others and just kind of reveling in it, I guess we'll, you know, just once again default to Dio. But, you know, Wapple, I think, was worse than Krieg because uh, he actually was a king. You know, Krieg was just a pirate. You know, Wapple really did. He was, like, in charge of controlling a country and he was, like, responsible for those people and he, and he still treated them like garbage. Um, and he's even I, way worse than Buggy in that opinion. So we're, we're getting a little bit close to Dio's, like, evil nature, but we're not quite there yet. I would probably put Wapple at, like, I don't know, four out of ten Dio's. He, the thing is, he's really stupid. <laughs> That's another thing, too. You gotta, when you get out of ten out of ten Dio's, you gotta have, like, that kind of, like, like, Doflamingo. The intelligence, the Machiavellian scheming, you know? That's, you know, that's the situation there, you know? Wapple is, like, He's kind of there with the dickishness, but he's not quite there enough, you know what I mean? So yeah, we'll put him like 4 out of 10 Dio's for, for Wapple. Uh, next up is Sir Crocodile. Alright, now we're talking. Now we're getting somewhere. What was Crocodile's goal here? His goal during Alabasta was, of course, to get the Poneglyph to find Pluton. What was he going to do with Pluton? He stated, like, it's a battleship. It can annihilate an island in a single shot. And I'm going to control that damn thing. What was he going to do with it? It's a world-destroying ancient weapon that can annihilate entire countries. Um, was he just going to use it on Whitebeard? That's an idea. I mean, that genuinely, it might have been. In that case, it, we could go be going back to the revenge story. Uh, revenge kind of plot line because Crocodile was defeated by uh, Whitebeard and so he's like I need some way to defeat him screw it I'll just get an ancient weapon Pluton and then there's no way he could stand up to that or did uh, Crocodile literally want to just rule the world you know it's like I have Pluton I have the strongest weapon in the world the greatest firepower no one could oppose me I'll just rule everything right um, also, I mean, his, his true dream that was revealed with, uh, Miss Golden Week's rainbow colors was he wanted to be the Pirate King. Remember when she did the rainbow colors and everybody kind of has their outfits that realize their true dreams? Um, you know, Crocodile got the outfit on, you know, the Pirate King outfit and everything. He's just like, what the hell is this? But he's like, so I guess he wants to be the Pirate King. So that's the ambition that still drives him subconsciously. Um, so I guess he wanted to use Pluton to take over the world. All right, so we're going with a take over the world kind of strategy here, uh, which kind of resembles, you know, Frieza a little bit, but I don't think, like, Frieza's the kind of dictator that's just like, he blows up planets for fun, you know? He, that's that's Frieza's character, right? He blows up planets for fun. I, well, I, not on a planetary scale, obviously, but I could see Crocodile maybe doing that. Maybe not for fun. I could see Crocodile doing that as an intimidation ploy. I could see him getting Pluton and just like, you listen to me. And one island is like, no, we will not listen to you. Boom! And then just blows the whole damn thing up with Pluton. I could see him doing that. And then he's like, all right, you other islands, listen to me or the same thing happens to you. And he's like, all right. So, you know, if that's the case, we're just, we might as well have just called this the Dio comparison video. <laughs> you know, comparing everything to Dio. Dio is, like I said, he's like a common denominator in a lot of senses here. I mean, just... He's been around for a long time. I mean, JoJo's has been in serialization from the 80s. So he's a baseline for a lot of this. We're getting closer to real Dio levels here. Uh, control the world with a great power. In Dio's case, it was vampirism and the stands. In Crocodile's case, it would have just been a giant super battleship. But we're getting there. And he did have the intelligence. I wouldn't say as bad as Doflamingo, though. If Doflamingo's 10 out of 10 Dio's, we'll, we'll go more... We'll go more 8, 8 out of 10 Dio's for Crocodile, okay? I feel like Doflamingo is a little bit higher than that just because he's a little bit more evil. Uh, but we'll go, we'll go eight, maybe maybe 8 out of 10 for, for Crocodile there. And the thing is, Crocodile, he sort of becomes an ally. I mean, he was an ally to Luffy and everybody during Marineford. Um, but he was still, like, he hasn't changed, really. Like, he just wasn't interested in Alabasta anymore because they didn't have the Poneglyph. Or at least he thought they didn't have the Poneglyph that he wanted. 
but he's still crocodile. He's still out there. He's still scheming. He, he's still out there trying to get his hands on Pluton or Poseidon or Uranus or some some weapon. You know, he's not a good guy. You know, he just helped out Luffy for a common cause. But now it's just like, no, he's out there scheming again. So I think that's fair. Who's next? Eneru. All right, Eneru. All right, Eneru definitely gives off Frieza vibes. Eneru was definitely nuking islands for fun. I mean, it wasn't because he, he's like, I will do revenge against the people of Skypea, or I will intimidate the people of Skypea. No, man. I mean, when he was using Death Pia and the Maxim, he was just wiping out islands just because he was done with them. They have served their purpose and is nothing more of just entertainment and just to, just probably for him to show off his own power. Just like, I want to see how powerful this can really be. Boom! Blew up a whole island. That's awesome, right? Now, his ultimate goal was to go to Fairy Verth the moon and you know have his own kingdom but you know you don't have to blow up skype in order to do that he literally could have just hopped in the maxim and just sailed away he didn't have to blow up an island in the process so i think i'm going to compare eneru to frieza in this respect all right so how many freezes did does eneru rank though um he was also a pretty evil dictator he was i mean he was the dictator that was like big brother is watching you and listening to everything you say he was using his mantra and if anybody anybody on the mainland was like hey guys i think eneru god you know he's kind of a douche boom they would just get smited like immediately like greek god style like you ever read freaking greek mythology and stuff greek mythology gods man they the greek pantheon they were on top of shit they didn't take that sitting down right if you went out in the street and you publicly you know shit talk zeus Zeus is sending, is sending a thunderbolt your way, right? Like, that's just how that's going. So that was Eneru. Frieza, oh, man. I mean, uh, Frieza, I would say, is worse than Eneru, but, like, if Eneru had the power that Frieza had, like, like world-destroying, busting kind of capabilities, you feel like he would be using them just to alleviate his boredom. I'll give him 9 out of 10 Frieza's. Because their personalities are not that far off. The only difference is Frieza was just doing it completely for fun. And Eneru did have an end goal. But he was still doing it for fun. So really, there's really not a huge comparison. I mean, a huge difference there, right? Um, next we have Bellamy. Alright, so Bellamy. You know, re-watching some episodes that he was in. Uh, and actually re-watching the video I made, because it was one of those things that was like, oh man, I need to make a Bellamy video. And then I found out I already did one, and I'm like, oh, okay, I made it last year. I'm like, all right, yeah, I guess I already made a Bellamy video, dang. But going back and watching those, you know the kind of vibe I'm getting off of Bellamy? Bellamy was just, like, when he joined Doflamingo's crew, when, well, he didn't join the crew officially, but he had the smile. And he was like, he was working under Doflamingo, like, under the smile, under the sigil. Um, he was just like a teenage kid. You know, he was, like, if you read his past, Bellamy was, like, like part of this teenage gang, I guess, and they formed, like, a pirate crew, and he's like, I'm bored with my old, my old hometown, let's go out to sea and be pirates, yeah, and he got his crew together, and they were just, like, kids, and they were just kind of getting in over their head, and they idolized Doflamingo, because Doflamingo was, like, this crime boss, and they found him, and they were like, hey, we love you, man. We want to join up with you. We want to fly under your sigil. And Doflamingo just kind of didn't really pay them much mind. He was just like, fine, I don't care. If you kids want to go around and cause trouble in my name, that's cool. But let me just, let me know, if you, um, if you fail, or if you bring shame to the sigil, then, um, you know, you're, you're, you will pay the price. You will be punished, okay? And, you know, Bellamy at the time was just like, you, you know, he was like a stupid kid. And he was just like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, we're, we're working for Doflamingo, this awesome crime boss from the North Blue. This is so cool, guys, right? And then he set it up his little gang in Mocktown, and he got older, and he was still doing it. And we learn about this during Dress Rosa, how he feels like, I think there was a line uh, when he was fighting Luffy, where he was using spring hopper all over the castle walls and he was like about to pass out and luffy's like you know stop it your injuries and bellamy was just like you know i might be an idiot and i might have joined up with him and i might have not have you know you know understood everything but even idiots have pride or something like that so you really feel like he's just a guy that made some bad choices when he was a teenager and now he's starting to realize the bad choices and like he was following a dude that had no sympathy no compassion for him would literally just throw him out to the trash if given an opportunity which doflamingo did um and so that's that's bellamy's character all right but 
still still a dick still an asshole right um so who do we got here that's like kind of not kind of not really a villain but just kind of a jerk <laughs> you know like who, who do we really got here hmm. okay so i have one i don't know how well this syncs up in fact you're probably gonna think bellamy and this character have nothing in common uh but if we're just going by their level of being a jerk to like the main character all right, and they continue to be a jerk, and it's like eventually they have a redemption moment where they're st they stop being a jerk. Um, Seto Kaiba from Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> so on the Seto Kaiba, not evil, but jerk scale. I really shouldn't have even put Bellamy on here, but he's here, and we're already talking about him. So whatever. On the jerk scale, I'll put him about mm, eight Seto Kaibas, eight out of ten Seto Kaibas, Seto Kaibas. Um, let's just go with that, because he is a jerk, you know, but I wouldn't call Bellamy evil or anything, you know, kind of misguided, uh, refuses to really think of other points of view, but not, not, not evil, but yeah. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about Rob Lucci. All right, Rob Lucci. Now, this is a guy, this is an interesting, uh, fella here. Uh, raised as an orphan to be a soldier fighting in, for, fighting for the world government, um, basically taught very little empathy or any sort of remorse for any particular, you know, person. Uh, it's like, you are a soldier, you are a tool, really, of the world government, and your job is to learn all these really cool Rokushiki techniques, and then here's a devil fruit that allows you to turn into a giant carnivorous cat, and, uh, you know, to fight pirates and do whatever we have to say, okay? Uh, Rob Lucci, very stoic, um... His goals, I'm not really sure. I feel like Rob Lucci might have something else going on behind the scenes because they did defect and then they went back to Cypherpole and now they're at Cypherpole Zero. But we don't know exactly what his plan is, um, honestly. And so for Lucci, I wanted to find another assassin from anime that was very, like, very stoic and just, like, carries out the job with very little emotion. And I arrived at uh, Illumi. Uh, Illumi Zoldic from Hunter Hunter. Now, Illumi's dynamic is a little different because he does care about his family quite a bit. Um, you know, that's the way that the Zoldic dynamic works. But I would argue Rob Lucci has comparisons there, too. Rob Lucci definitely cares about his friends in CP9, um, especially after the events of Eni's Lobby. So I think the comparison there is very apt. Uh, compared to Rob Lucci to Illumi, I would say he ranks pretty up there in terms of just his personality and, uh, you know, just his, his cold, callous nature. So I'm going to put him at 9 out of 10 Illumi Zoldic. There you go. There you go. There's Rob Lucci. Uh, next up is Blackbeard. Um, a little bit out of order here, but yeah, Blackbeard is next. So Blackbeard, his ambition we actually do not know. I would assume Blackbeard wants to just rule the ocean and do the pirate paradise thing, same as Kaido, except Blackbeard maybe a little bit even more extreme than Kaido. Um, because Blackbeard, you know, he has connections to Zebek or Zebek, and, you know, Zebek kind of wanted to rule the entire world with sort of like an iron fist, whatever. We, we don't really know what it means when he wanted to rule the world or sit at the top of the world, but I can kind of picture Blackbeard, like, amassing all these really strong pirates and devil fruit abilities, and, like, I, I, you can picture him, like, burning down Marie Joie and just kind of ruling the entire planet from up there, okay? That might be his final goal, I don't know if it's a situation like a reincarnated form of rocks or whatever, um, but Blackbeard is certainly up there in that level of nefariousness, okay? So, with that being said, let's go with Dio again. <laughs> let's go with Dio. Um, yeah, because you can kind of see Dio doing that too. Um, all right, on a scale of 1 to 10 for Dio, I would say Dio is more intelligent than Blackbeard. See, here's the thing with Blackbeard. Blackbeard has come up with so many interesting plans, like the thing with, like, Impel Down getting in there and, you know, getting out and freeing level six and then stealing Whitebeard's fruit and the whole thing at Marineford. But then he makes really stupid choices every once in a while. But Dio kind of does what, as well. Dio kind of, you know, he's intelligent, but he kind of gets ahead of himself every now and then. He makes assumptions or he thinks he's just so cool that he can't fail. Blackbeard's definitely done that before. Yeah, I'm gonna give Blackbeard 10 out of 10 Dios. Yeah, that's where we go. Um, what's next? Uh, let's see. Horty Jones. All right, Horty Jones. Um, once again, it's a revenge story. So, not, you know, actually, you know what? It isn't a revenge story with Horty. It was revenge with Arlong, because Arlong witnessed firsthand the torment of um, humans, like, enslaving Fishman and Merfolk, and also witnessed humans just gunning down Fisher Tiger right in front of him. Arlong's was a revenge story, and so I compared him to Sasuke. Horty's, though, is literally just, I hate humans 
because I hate humans. It's he hates humans not because humans did anything to him. It's because he was raised in an environment with Arlong as his elders that taught him to hate humans. All right? So that's a little bit of a different dynamic there. Hmm. You know, I said this at the beginning, like, any sort of parental kind of relationship has to be compared to Shao Tucker. And Hordy's father figure, or like big brother figure at least, was Arlong. You know, he would, like, you know, him and all the other New Fishman pirates, like Zeo and Icarus and everybody, they would all kind of sit around and, like, you know, Big Brother or, like, Dad Arlong would, like, tell them the stories of how messed up humans are and we need to, like, wipe them all out and enslave them all for what we're doing. Like, that is kind of the relationship Horty had with Arlong. Um, and there were other fishmen as well, not just Arlong, that shared those beliefs. Uh, you know, even Jinbei kind of shared those beliefs for a while. Not as extreme, but Jinbei kind of is like, we can't forgive humans, we need to fight them, we need to, you know, we, you know, we need to do what we need to do. Uh, but there were other fishmen in the district that kind of raised the kids that would later become the new fishmen pirates, right? So we could kind of compare them to that, sort of. Um... You know, there's even, honestly, there is even kind of similarities there between Kid Boo and Horty, with Kid Boo just being this amalgam of just hatred and rage. And that's kind of what Oda was going for, I think, a little bit, because there was that whole chapter where Fukuboshi was fighting him, and Fukuboshi is just yelling to the freaking um, Horty, who's all roided out and like red eyes and just hulking out and everything. And he's like, What did humans ever do to you? Why are you even doing this? Why are you trying to like wipe us all out? Like, like, what did they do that was so bad? And Hordy's just like, not a thing. Nothing! I just hate him. Let's go with Kid Boo, though. Let's go with Kid Boo. Why not? Might, might as well make one comparison. Now, Kid Boo, literally, like, created by Bibbidi to be, like, the amalgam avatar of hatred, rage, and evil. Uh, Hordy was just, like, his upbringing. That's kind of what led him on that path. But... He had some glimmers of that, you certainly have to say. And even after being defeated and aged, he was still spouting that philosophy in the in the jail. He was still like, I still hate humans, they need to all burn. So it's like, all right, he's not really going to learn his lesson there. Um, yeah, sure, why not? I'll go with Kid Boo. Let's compare him to that. Um, I don't know. Three out of ten Kid Boos for Horty. I mean, yeah, he kind of had it. Or Freeze, I guess, in that regard, because... Well, we don't know much about Frieza's upbringing. I don't even... I, actually, I would be very interested in Frieza's upbringing. You know how that exactly went. But he was raised as sort of like... He was raised by his dad, who was a dictator, to be a dictator kind of situation. So there is comparisons there. I just wanted to compare at least one of these characters to Kid Boo because I wrote him down. Um, who's next? Caesar Clown. All right, Caesar Clown is the mad scientist! You know, and he's the mad scientist. And he did a lot of messed up experimentations... Um, the impression that you do get, though, is, yeah, he did take some joy in these experiments, but mostly I feel like he was just doing it for the money. You know, like, Big Mom was giving him money, Kaido was giving him money, and so he did that kind of stuff. He was also really interested in one-upping Vegapunk, so he was more, I think, about, like, not really so much, uh, revenge, it was more... It was more kind of like Buggy in that respect a little bit there, where it's just like Vegapunk was always better than Caesar, and so Caesar's like, well, fine, I'll, I'll start my own mad science lab with Blackjack and hookers, you know? And so he does that, and it's like Kaido and Big Mom are like, all right, you're this mad scientist that will listen to us. You're not as good as Vegapunk, but I guess, you know, whatever will take you. And so then they started funding him, and then he started with the gigantification stuff. But you also get that he did take a sick, twisted pleasure in his craft like you know messing with the kids genetics and everything and you know giving them poison essentially um and he took great pride in creating the smiles and giving them off to kaido and orochi to do god knows what with them ruling all of wano and that in turn oppressed a lot of people and he had his fingers in a lot of sinister soups in the black market and everything there's also a lot of messed up mad scientists in uh oh what about medusa from soul eater she was a scientist right and uh, that was more of like a, a maternal thing, rather like Shao Tucker was a father and messed up. Medusa was like that as a mother, though, right? So, but she was a mad scientist, you know, and um, she had a lot of that. She did take demented pleasure in that. Six-ish out of ten for Medusa, because Medusa was way worse, and 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 Dio was as well. But like, yeah, 
Caesar, you know, he just couldn't measure up, but he's like right there kind of in the middle, a little bit above average. Um, after Caesar, uh, we already did Joe Flamingo. I, th I just for the rest of the story, I think we just have Big Mom and Kaido. There are other characters that are villains, um, but maybe don't rank up as badly. And then of course we have like Eam and the Gorosei, but we still don't know like too much about them yet as like individual characters. So I didn't put them on the list. Let's just go with Big Mom and then Kaido, and then we'll finish it off. I feel like I'm probably forgetting at least one villain, like one major villain from One Piece. So let me know. Um, but anyway, let's go. Let's go with Big Mom. Okay. Okay, so Big Mom's ambition here, as we find out in her past, is she wants to make a world where everybody can kind of be equal together and sit around the dining room table and have a nice meal, okay? She wants to make this perfect, idealized world that Mother Caramel talked about. The twist there is Mother Caramel was also messed up and evil! Ooh, Mother Caramel. Ooh. Mother Caramel, 8 out of 10 Medusa Gorgons. There we go. Um, but no, 8 out of 10 there. But when it comes to Big Mom, it's like what she's doing is messed up, but it's in her mind, it's like a good thing. Like she's a pirate and has killed so many people, but for her, it's justified because at the end of the day, I will make this perfect country, Totland, where everybody can come together and be equal, except they won't be. Because even in Totland, Big Mom still mistreats a lot of her own children like pudding. So she doesn't really believe in the equality thing only if it just like literally having everybody that's the same height as her all eating together that's her dream and then it's just like anything else it's like she's blind to um so kind of a dictator in that sense and i can see big mom blowing up islands for fun yeah let's compare big mom to frieza why not <laughs> okay um compared to frieza you know obviously not getting power levels or anything involved because frieza is obviously a lot stronger but just in terms of like you know cruel dictator um, you know, Frieza, though, doesn't have that kind of, like, even, like, that fake kind of perspective of, like, I want to make a perfect world. Frieza's just doing this because he just wants to, you know, see, he literally takes pleasure in watching people suffer. Big Mom is, it does as well, but Big Mom is like, well, it's all for this perfect land that I want to create. Frieza has none of that. Frieza's not like, I will rule this world so everything is ruled over by me and everything's perfect and happy and everyone's equal. No, Frieza doesn't have that ideology. But, you know, definitely, definitely similarities there. I would go, I would go 7 out of 10 Frieza's for Big Mom. 7 out of 10 Frieza's. Just because her personality is a little bit more chaotic than his and her perspective on it is, is like, she's doing a good thing, right? Uh, messed up still, but she thinks she's doing a good thing. And then finally, let's end this out with Kaido. <laughs> Kaido! Uh, we still don't know much about Kaido's past. I feel like we're going to be getting that rather soon, but we don't know a lot about it right now, so I can't really compare it to that. Um, but we know Kaido wants to create a pirate paradise. He's ruling all of Wano. Um, you know, decapitates Orochi. But he also, he's not as dickish as Orochi. Oh yeah, why wasn't Orochi on here? Orochi has to be on here, absolutely. We'll do Orochi to end it out. Um, but yeah, Kaido not as bad as Orochi, and you feel like he's a more complicated dragon duck fish man than his initial appearance. So he's a little bit more of a complex villain than that. Um, you know, man, I really don't feel comfortable comparing him to Frieza or Dio in that respect. Um, okay, I'll tell you what. As of right now in the story, we don't know much about his past. I feel like we're going to get it, and it's going to be a lot more um, in-depth with that. Like, we're going to find out, like, why he's doing what he's doing. Aki Inu. I forgot to put down Aki Inu. Just dawned on me. Probably a lot of people are already commenting on it. Hold on. We'll get to him and Orochi then. Um, but as for right now in the story, just going by what he's done, uh, the people he's killed, you know, ruling over Wano as a dictator, as benevolent and, like, powerful, and wanting to control that world... Uh, I guess you could go with Frieza or Dio in that sense, but we just did Frieza for Big Mom, so let's do Dio for Kaido. And in that case, Dio compared to Kaido uh, in terms of evil nature, I'm going to say honestly, I want to put it low. I want to put it like 6 out of 10, honestly, because I feel like we're going to get redeeming qualities with Kaido. I don't know if they'll take, but I feel like we're going to get some. So with that being the case, let's go 6 out of 10 Dios for, uh, for, for Kaido. Um, now we have Aki Inu. I didn't put the other admirals on here, though. That's why I, that's why I skipped over Aki Inu, because I was thinking about Kizaru, and I'm like, nah, is not really evil. I don't want to put him on there. And Aki Inu is, I mean, he, he follows the law of absolute justice, but he is, I'll tell you what, Aokiji kind of said it best. He's like, absolute justice kind of leads a man down the road to madness. 
all right and you can definitely see that with Haki Inu. absolutely you definitely see that with him so i would say someone that is following his mission like he thinks Haki Inu feels everything he does is justified blowing up an entire boat full of civilians men women children justified justified as long as it means that the survivors from ohara don't get away you know that there's nobody that can read poneglyphs escapes he's not going to lose any sleep at night over it okay so he's that kind of character hmm so this is actually kind of tricky for me i'm trying to think of a character that is part of an organization and just has a perspective that just goes too far like is like your duty is to protect you know the world or protect the people and that character just like okay but dials that up to like 11 and takes it way too far and for the life of me i cannot think like the best character that embodies that that i'm thinking of right now is freaking akainu is sakazuki i'm trying to think of another character from another anime that kind of embodies that um like you know that just like takes that like job they have and just goes crazy with it all right to the point where like they're kind of the best at what they do but it's like jeez you need to you need to calm down a little bit there man i don't know i'm blanking on this one man i need to watch more anime i feel like maybe like in gundam or something there's like those giant mech animes where there's like an organized military kind of going on i feel like there's probably a villain like that in one of those but i just can't think of anything right now aki inu ranks 10 out of 10 aki inus there we go uh lastly some character i forgot to put on here which is funny uh we're gonna be talking about lord orochi i am lord orochi i have ruled all of wano and now i'm in my bunker and i hope no one finds me after i light the whole place on fire all right so orochi is just a sniveling little snake of a man you know he is just there to like he even said like i'm not even here to like some grand goal other than just to ruin the country that ruined my family um the kurozumi clan was persecuted for years and years because of uh, orochi's grandfather attempting to usurp the shogunate and so because of that reason basically his entire family was chased down and murdered in the streets and so he was like abandoned as an orphan you know like being chased after constantly you know every night afraid that somebody's gonna find him and kill him so one thing leads to another through his journey and he ends up being the shogun himself and he's just gonna know i'm not really here to try to reform the country or change it no i'm here to awash myself in just abject luxury and then ruin the country literally just destroy the land rip all the trees out deforest the whole thing pollute the waters ruin everything and then when i die i will just know that the country that ruined my family is also near its deathbed as well that was pretty much orochi's goal which makes him a pretty big dick, okay? So, with that said, screw it, let's compare Orochi to Frieza. Let's do it. Because if Orochi had the abilities that Frieza does have, like if he had the ability to nuke Wano, he would do it. He wouldn't just do it right away. He would do it slowly, and he would revel in it, and he would laugh. Like if Orochi had an ability that allowed him to like snap his fingers, and then all the people and all the lands of Wano would slowly burn up into ash, like over the course of several minutes or hours, he would do that in a heartbeat, and he would be off to the side laughing the entire time, okay? He'd be out there to see with a pair of binoculars watching it, and he'd be like, ha 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 ha, I am the Orochi! You know, that's the kind of guy Orochi is. So, nine out of 10 freezes? <laughs> Let's just go with that. That's the video. This was a long one. This took a while. This took a while because I had like a set of like five or six villains that I was going to compare everybody to. And then as we're going down the list, I'm like, well, maybe this character would be better for that. So I had to stop it a bunch of times. But I hope you enjoyed and I hope you didn't take the video too seriously as well. Um, obviously, yeah, Orochi versus Frieza. Obviously, Orochi would win. I mean, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, uh, before we get going, I do have one last thing to do, and that is, of course, Dinosaur Facts! Dun, 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 dun! Alright, it's already a long video, let's just do it. Alright, this dinosaur fact is on a little-known dinosaur called the Lin... L Lin Hen Hyuks. It's uh, from China. They're, they originated from the area that would later become China. And these are what they look like. They're not very big dinosaurs. They were only about a, a few feet tall. But the funniest thing about them is you, you thought the Tyrannosaurus Rex was kind of funny for having the stubby little arms that they can't really use. But the Tyrannosaurus Rex is actually could use those arms. Like, you know, they could grab and make it easier to, like, eat and stuff. Like, hold their prey. But these things only had a single digit just 
seemingly extruding from their chest. So, like, right here, they just had these two little things, like, like pointy nipples, just coming out of them. And what function could they really serve, you know? Other than just, like, running up to the enemy and just, like, like ramming into them, you know, stabbing them, I guess. Um, so the general idea is they didn't just have one of these. It was one of the situations where they did have other digits, but the other digits were, like, vestigial or, like, they were so small that you really couldn't see them. But they had these two ones, you know, poking out. Their name even literally means just a single finger or a single digit. Um, and it seems to be that they were the ancestors of modern-day anteaters. Okay, so they would kind of just hang out because they weren't very big. So they would just kind of hang out around, you know, prehistoric ant hills. And they would use these like pointy finger nipples or whatever hands to like dig at the ground and like scoop up and eat, you know, ants and stuff. So yeah, that's a dinosaur I bet you never heard of before. There you go, right? That has been dinosaur facts. So we got a lot more coming down the pipeline. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching and this will be Barry signing out. Whoa! Feel free to comment down below on all the other villains that I didn't discuss in the story, both One Piece and in other you know, manga. And talk about um, which character you think would, uh, if you're going to do the scale with Aki Inu. Because I cannot for the life of me, you know, military or some sort of individual like that that's given a set of rules and just takes it too far. I feel like that character should be a dime a dozen, and I feel like I probably have seen characters like that in other series. But for the life of me, I just can't think of one off the top of my head right now. Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. Teching signing out.